All right, good afternoon, Breakpoint. Good afternoon, Singapore. Are you guys ready for some payments content? It's coming up. All right. Hey, everyone. Well, no one better uh, to start off the payments content than Jose Fernandez de Ponte, the SVP of crypto at PayPal. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks so much, Jose, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we get started, I think there is a moment for us to pat ourselves on the back or congratulate ourselves because this was a very monumental uh, thing that happened. We had one of the largest payments companies in the world issuing on Solana as basically the first chain. I mean, ETH L1 is like our DevNet, right? Like you, you, you practice some stuff on ETH, but then when you want something that really works, you, you run it on Solana. Solana is now the, the canonical chain for PYUSD. It's, it's the um, more PYUSD issued on Solana than Ethereum. And it, it was one of the fastest growing launches of any stablecoin on Solana. So let's, let's make some noise for this. So, uh, so Jose, you, you've, we've discussed this in past forums, but maybe just kind of starting at first principles. Can you discuss why PayPal decided to issue a stablecoin and why on Solana is the second part of that question? Yeah, I think it's a three-part uh, answer. PayPal has obviously been in payments for the best part of the last 25 years. And we are in crypto and we are in digital currencies because we are in payments. Uh, it's the first time if... I myself have been in payments for 20 years. If you look back at fintech innovation, 90% of that has been innovation in UX and innovation in, in fraud. Not a lot has been innovation on fundamental payment rails. So when we started to explore blockchain protocols and we look at, oh, we can actually move value here between countries instantly, we can move it at a speed that is 26 times cheaper than, than ACH, that is 400 times cheaper than checks. And this was about four years ago. So I say, it will take a while, but this is too important for us not to have a chip on, on the table. So that's when we started to support a crypto on the PayPal and Venmo apps in a, in a few countries. That's when we started to go with a, our stablecoin project that went live last year. The first chain was, was Ethereum. We all know that Ethereum is not the best solution for payments when we were looking at the primitives. If you're in retail payments, you need to be able to do a thousand transactions per second at least. And you need to do a few other things that are that differentiate a payment from a transaction. Sometimes when you're on the crypto side, people talk about payments when actually they're only talking about moving value from one wallet to another wallet. There is a ton in addition to that that you need to do. There is a, the, you need to manage chargebacks. You, you need to manage confidentiality of transactions. So it was very easy when, when we're looking at where do we go next and what is the right chain for payments to look at what you all were, were building. It's not only the speed and it's not only the throughput who, that, uh, who are important. Is We will talk about token extensions. Token extensions was a big, big driver for us. Very cool. Um, so I, I think one thing I want to I quickly go over what PayPal brings to the table because I think there are sometimes two camps of people. Some people that are in payments get super excited about PayPal because they understand the assets that it brings to the table. Other people are like, well, whatever, it's another stable coin. So very quickly, I want to talk about some of the assets and then I want you to tell me like, which of these you think are you're most excited about. So let's start with, we've got the PayPal wallet, 400 million users uh, globally. PayPal checkout, 30 million merchants basically. We've got Braintree. We've got Venmo with 90 million users. You have a PayPal credit product. You've got Zoom, which is a remittance business. You have HyperWallet, which is a platform for global payouts. You have Zettle, which I didn't even know about, which is a mobile POS. So, so I think some of the things that are, people get excited about is th this great array of assets. I know it's a long process in a big company to start integrating. Where, um, like, wh where do you see sort of the roadmap and, and which of these assets do you think are sort of the low-hanging fruit? So for, for all of you in the room who are building and need payment capabilities for what you are building, think about there will be obviously, and there are uh, other stable coins on Solana. There is not another one that has enabled for transfer extensions. So think about that for token extensions. So think about that as well. But the uniqueness of building on top of PUSD is getting access to the PayPal to side the network. All those assets that the shares were, were talking about and many that we don't really talk about, but it, Think of where do you have an stable coin that can be deployed for 400 million consumers, that can be deployed for 40 million merchants, that moves billions in remittances cross-border. All that is, is going to be available over time. One of the reasons that we decided that we were not going to the design, that there is not a PayPal blockchain. We didn't go, want to go permission. We, did, we wanted to build 
on open source because we don't operate on the, on the blockchain side and we don't operate on the protocol side. We operate on the application and the UX part of it and we want our engineering teams to work on deploying our stablecoin into each and every PayPal property that you can find out there. And it's gonna take us years, it's not, not everything is deployed right now, but we believe in open source technology, we believe in, in deploying in the places where developers are building, and we believe in making our uh, network available to others. Um, so kind of on that vein, I mean, we, there's a lot of people talk about how do we get crypto to mainstream, uh, there's a lot of chatter about base and base's ability to leverage, you know, 70 million Coinbase users. I see PayPal as a, uh, the ability to have a beautiful on-ramp, you know, seamless on-ramps to get, you know, 300 million users. So where, um, like, where do you see that? Because right now I think the on-ramps, there's some limitation geographically, but like, I think that's, to me, that, like, the vision of onboarding all these hundreds of millions of people into crypto. That's a roadmap problem, it's not a yeah. scientific problem. That, right. that those things will happen. Amazing. Now okay. th think about it, I think that you, ha you make a very, very good point. The population that uses PayPal is basically, the, think only about, for instance, the US. The population that uses PayPal is not the population of people who are already crypto adapters, no, they are not crypto experts is the population of the US. And so right. if you want to get access to something that is very, very mainstream, you need to be into the big platforms. And I do believe that you will see over time more and more use cases that might be just regular FinTech and payments on the front and a stable coin on the back and a stable coin will be used to a settlement, as a settlement layer. I have a ton of respect for the Coinbase folks and what Base is doing and what others are doing. I think it's really, really important. Uh, that, that those ecosystems exist. But where we help is in bringing that into, into the mainstream. The fact that when we started a, our crypto product way back in 2020, 70% of the folks who were interacting with our crypto product, who were buying Bitcoin on the Venmo wallet, we were their first crypto experience. They had never interacted with crypto before. So having experiences that are gateway experiences that get the mainstream economy and mainstream users into digital currencies is something that is A, fundamentally important, B, something that you need to go and find them in the platforms where they are. Got it. You mentioned, um, you talked a little bit about token extensions uh, and we have limited time so we won't talk about all the different features that can be enabled, but I think confidential transfers is probably one of the yep. killer use cases or one of the killer features in payments, particularly for institutional and enterprise users. Um, where do you, uh, how, how differentiated a value prop do you see that in, in payments? Or how necessary do you think that is for payment, stablecoin payments to go from where they are today, which is just the tip of the iceberg, to you know, becoming much bigger in, in enterprise payments? Look, we, we are in the market every day uh, selling enterprise clients on stablecoin. One thing that we have realized very quickly is that the first client that you have at an enterprise is the CFO. It's not mm -hmm. the head of e-commerce, it's not the head of marketing, it's the CFO. Because that's where the value is the most evident. When you're taking to someone, hey, you can move money here at a fraction of a cent, you can settle on weekends, you can repatriate funds from cross-border. It's a very rational conversation to have. What you're not gonna convince the, the CFO is, a hey, use us to distribute payroll to your employees. And by the way, each and every transaction is gonna be posted on chain and people can see how much you're paying in, in, on on chain. Or you're a public company and you're accepting payments on a stable coin. And look, all hedge funds out there are gonna be able to see your transaction activity before uh, because everything is posted out there. So confidential transfers are absolutely something that is part of the MVP that you need to be able to build payment products for enterprises on top of stable coins. So our audience tends to skew to developers, builders, startups. What, um, what, do you, what do you think is missing out there? Like if you were, I mean, obviously PayPal is the 900 pound gorilla, but there's huge industries of small companies that can build around, right? That always happens in FinTech. Anything you would encourage people to look at, any categories, like what, what, any messages to the developers out there to build on PYUSD? And, uh, I can tell you what, what we are very focused on because I think that's where, where adoption will happen first. We are spending a ton of time in cross-border. Uh, cross-border payments is probably where, where adoption will happen first. We are spending a ton of time on B2B use cases and enterprise uh, use cases. And we are spending a ton of time on the CFO side of the house. And to do that, 
And there's a place where I would encourage developers to look into. Once that you have the substrate, once that you have the blockchain and the features on top of the blockchain that you all have, have built, you need to reduce the friction for the folks who are going to be building on the enterprise side. When, you, when you're looking at payments, one of the reasons we enabled very recently ENS for on-chain transfers on the PayPal platform, because it is important that users have a human readable way to direct payments to one another. But there are going to be uh, other things that will be required. Integration between something that is very important is to give institutions and enterprises and, uh, and small businesses an easy way to hold digital assets. The accounting treatment is difficult. They, they don't, a CFO doesn't want to be involved in whether they, they need to mark to market the digital assets mm -hmm, because the mm -hmm. price is going up or down. And integration with existing platforms, the fact that you need to make it easy for a corporate user. They will not run a different tax ledger to deal with your product on stable coins. They will not uh, integrate with a, keep a spreadsheet on the side. It has to be integrated with ERP, ERPs. There is a ton of work in that middleware between enterprise pay grade payments products and the blockchain where there is a, a ton of space for the community to go and build. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, one good example of PayPal eating its own dog food, as they say, is PayPal Ventures. Uh, and we actually have a special guest. I, you're, we're talking a little bit about how, uh, you know, venture funding, uh, you know, could sometimes uh, benefit from, like, just in time. You, you gave an anecdote about, like, somebody closing around and, like, needing the funding right away, right? So, like, that's so, interesting. Yeah, first of all, public service announcement. I don't need to tell this to this crowd, but, but if you all are racing, we tell that. Our ventures team tell that to all the startups. If, if you want to get a check from PayPal, we don't do checks anymore. We, we do on-chain transfers to wallets, it's, so that's... Uh, and, and as you were saying, we were making an investment in a different company. We were going through the due diligence and the like. The closing happened on a Friday evening after banking hours. The company wanted to announce the round on Monday morning. There was no way that we can get the money there through uh, wire transfers or banking rails. So we just sent them stablecoin and hit their wallet. Lawyers were happy they announced the round at... Uh, on a Monday morning. If not, it would have held up the announcement by a few days. And so with that, I wanted to invite uh, Omer from Chaos Labs, who is the most recent uh, recipient of uh, uh, PayPal Ventures funding. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Really excited to be here. Um, I'm Omer Goldberg. I'm the founder of Chaos Labs. Uh, we're a leader in on-chain risk management. So we have the privilege of working with the biggest decentralized applications on Solana, uh, with the biggest X, Jupyter, Aave, DYDX, and GMX as well. Uh, recently, last week, we announced the launch of Edge Protocol, uh, which is a price, risk, and proof of reserves oracle meant to facilitate the growing DeFi economy across all the chains. We launched it with Jupyter and have already processed over $40 billion in transactional volume. Uh, we're really excited about it, and what's even more exciting is that we got to build it uh, with our long-term partners, PayPal, uh, in mind. And, and your fundraise came via PYUSD. And the fundraise what? Your fundraising is your, your, your check. Your, you didn't get a check, you got PYUSD for your... Well, fundraise. exactly. And, <laughs> and, you know, what's really great when you're aligned with your partners and how excited we are for everything that's being built in the Solana ecosystem, uh, we decided to do this investment a little bit differently. So instead of writing a check in the traditional sense, the folks at PayPal made their first investment on Solana with PYUSD, uh, which was completed several days ago. Uh, so this is a new one, and it's just a testament to how excited we are for everything that we're, that's being built in the growing Solana ecosystem. Uh, for anyone who's going to be here uh, later today, if you're interested to speak about oracles, risk management, AI, prediction markets, we're going to be here. Uh, we'd love to connect. We'll be here after this. Thank you, you guys. A, you have a video to show? Or, yeah. Oh yeah, the I think there's an animation to show the to show the investment itself. There we go. An additional four million in PYUSD to the 60 million Series A, which we previously announced a few weeks ago. Done on Solana. Thank you to PayPal. Thank you to the foundation. All right. Proud to be Thank investors. You. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank Thanks you. Somewhere. Thank you guys. Thank you Jose. Yeah. Thanks.